Here are a few words we hear often on social media or in those circles, in those social circles, cancel, boundaries, and closure. But imagine what would happen if we heard more words like connect, build, accept, and love. My next guest says buzzwords like closure are often misunderstood and they could be hurting your relationships. So we'll teach you what to reach for instead. Studio 5 Parenting contributor Heather Johnson joins me. And we're gonna focus specifically on that word closure today. What do you think, can you give us any examples of what closure may look like in those family situations? Yeah, so there's so many of them. This is uh, two siblings who are now adults who feel like their parents parented differently and played favorites, mm -hmm. right? This is simple squabbles back and forth between two sisters who somebody's borrowed a shirt and didn't return it in the right way. And so they're looking for some sort of explanation or closure. Mm -hmm. This is when we're ghosted in a relationship or one of our kids are. And so we're looking at the situation going, I need some information. I need to better understand this. Mm. This is especially true when we have adult children who feel like their parents aren't being supportive in the way they parent. And so as a result, they withhold time with grandchildren oh. and they, they withhold time in relationships. This is all over the place where we're saying, until I get some closure, I'm refusing to move forward or mm -hmm. I'm refusing to make changes. So there is a wide scope of that closure, but why, why do we need closure so badly? Why do we feel that we need that so badly? Well, it always stems from being emotionally involved or um, invested in a relationship. So when I'm really invested in a relationship, naturally I wanna have those answers and understandings, but then it turns into this place where we wanna be exonerated or we wanna have more data to better understand why a situation's happened. We're desperate for someone else to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. We wanna be understood. All of those things promote this need for us to think that we need closure. And that's, that's intentionally said. We don't actually have to have what society deems as closure in order to move forward. But it feels so buzzy. It does. Everybody feels like we need it. We're setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. We need all these things. It almost is like an ego thing. Yeah, we, we start to then buckle down, right? Mm -hmm. And it hinders our ability to grow because we're so busy waiting for this closure that we don't ever take the means that we need to in order to move forward. Yeah, so we've heard what closure is. What's, what closure, what is closure not? So closure is not something someone else gives us. Mm. It is not waiting around, it's not an apology, it's mm -hmm. not someone taking responsibility. It cannot be provided to us from someone else. Closure is actually something that we can only give ourselves. Closure is taking accountability. Closure is moving forward. Closure is managing our own emotions. That's what closure is. But we, we don't deem it that way, right? We think of closure and we think, well, until you give me something, until you have the conversation or provide the answers or mm -hmm. the explanations, and then tell me why you're sorry, I can't move forward. Mm -hmm. And that, that's not closure. That's not what we're looking to understand here, which is why when it becomes such a buzzword, we're just very quick to say, well, I, I need closure, instead mm -hmm. of realizing, I provide closure to myself. I have to give that to me. Mm, I love that because it's putting it on you. It's not mm. relying on others. I love that. Which is your first point today? You're going to help us give that healthier version of closure. The first one is stop relying on others for closure. Yeah, we're going to stop relying on what they do or don't do for us to be okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when we spell that out, it's kind of crazy to think that I'm going to sit around and decide if I can move forward based on what you do. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Right. And so we can't rely on whether someone gives us an apology or whether they'll sit down and have a conversation. Oftentimes in these situations, they don't even know what to say, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're waiting for them to figure it out, solve it, take responsibility, that puts our growth and our healing on the line. So instead, we're going to stop waiting and relying on other people. We're going to rely on ourselves to provide closure for us. I think that is beautiful. I love that it's putting it back on you. Next is worry more about accepting than resolving. This one, su this one surprised me. Yeah, we want the resolution, right? Yeah. We mm -hmm. wanna know the whys behind it. We wanna have a full understanding and more important, we want someone else to fully understand our perspective. Mm -hmm. And so we think that for there to be closure, there has to be a resolution. That's not true. Closure is about accepting. It's accepting that the situation happened. It's accepting that I felt a lot of emotions about it, right? Mm -hmm. Closure doesn't mean we're not gonna feel hurt or pain. Closure means that we're gonna know what to do when we feel those emotions. So we're gonna accept what's gone down. We're gonna accept that we're in charge of moving forward instead of again looking for some sort of resolution that gives us permission 
to move forward. Mm. We can't move forward that way. Can't move forward that way. We can move forward by building a bridge. Mm. Yeah, we tend to look at closure, right, as I need you to like create this beautiful package and put a really pretty bow on it and then hand it to me and we've, we've tied it all up and now it's set. Wouldn't it be care. lovely? Wouldn't oh, it, it would be, great? be so <laughs> lovely, right? <laughs> But that's not what closure is. Closure sometimes still looks messy. In fact, often it does. Mm -hmm. Closure still means there's hurt feelings. It still means that there's questions that go unanswered. So we're much better off viewing closure as a bridge that we're gonna build ourselves that takes us from what's happened or what we don't understand to where we wanna go, mm -hmm. right? It's gonna bridge the gap between the two so that we can see the, the boards or the pieces that we need to build that bridge to manage the emotions, mm -hmm. to renegotiate and accept but we're in charge of that. It, it doesn't always look really pretty. Sometimes it still really does hurt. And we don't want to let what's happened decide how we're going to move forward or what relationships we're going to have moving forward. That's what a bridge does. It helps create that connection between those two things. Mm, I love that. Build a bridge. Okay, next you say take responsibility. This mm -hmm. seems to be a theme in a lot of in a lot of those buzzwords that we're missing. Yes, we're going to take responsibility, which means we're going to take responsibility for our contributions because mm -hmm. there tends to be a space we can do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to take responsibility for our emotions and what I'm feeling now and how I've decided to view the situation. Instead of being emotionally dependent on them, we're going to take responsibility and we're going to take responsibility for healing and moving forward. That's up to us. It isn't up to someone else to provide us that. They can wrong, they can do it in unhealthy ways and we can still choose to take responsibility for what we're gonna do with what someone else has done and how we're gonna move forward. And so that responsibility is so important. It's so valuable for us. And it seems like a big step in that process. It kind mm. of feels like the step that is gonna help you go to the bridge. It's gonna yeah. help you go to the next spot. It's just taking that responsibility. It is. It's so hard. It is, it's hard. It's hard. And we really desperately want someone else to understand mm -hmm. and we want them to take responsibility, yeah. right? Especially in situations where they've they've misstepped mm -hmm. or they've wronged us in some way. Yeah. You know, being wronged, that happens. We've all been in that situation. Yeah. But again, we don't want to let that hinder us. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing that's so important here is also to make sure that we stay really connected. Mm -hmm. And that connection doesn't mean with people who are viewing closure as someone else's responsibility. We actually want to connect ourselves with people who genuinely understand what closure is. We want to find the girlfriends, the family members that aren't saying, oh, don't talk to them. They haven't apologized yet. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're looking for. Right. We want to stay connected to the family members and to the girlfriends and friends that say, hey, listen, how can I help you manage your emotions so you can move forward? How can I help you take responsibility and accountability so that you can heal and grow? Opposed to that opposite perspective, which is, oh, no, no, no. You just stay there because you've been wronged. And once they fix it, then you can go ahead and experience closure or move mm -hmm. forward. We gotta make sure that we're connecting with like-minded, with healthy-minded people when it comes to needing help when, when we want closure. If there was a bow on this package, it feels like it's connection. Mm -hmm. It's what we all want. It's how we all want to be perceived and we wanna be connected, we wanna understood. I love that you're taking closure and making it and bringing mm -hmm. it open so that we can all feel better. So that we can connect. So we yes. can connect. Thanks, Heather. You can find Heather Coaches, individuals and family to schedule her. You can contact, find her contact information on our website.